How's it going guys? It's Kay Cars and in today's video I'm going to be explaining the Jeep four-wheel drive system specifically with my 2023 Jeep Wrangler Rubicon 392. Now this does apply to every JL Wrangler but there will be one small difference when it comes to the 392 which of course I will explain in today's video. I'm going to explain to you guys how the four-wheel drive system works, how to actually use it, then after that I'm going to demonstrate how to actually do it. Let's go ahead and hop in and get started. So first things first, I would definitely recommend reading your owner's manual and going through those guidelines. There's basically two different options for transfer cases when it comes to JL Wranglers. So the first transfer case is going to be the four position transfer case. This one is going to have the standard two wheel drive, four wheel drive high range, neutral and four low. The next one is going to be the five position transfer case. That one is gonna have your standard two wheel drive. You're also gonna have four high auto. You're also gonna have four high part time, neutral, and then four low. Now the difference with the 392 trim is that it actually does not have a two wheel drive option. It's kind of in between the middle of those two. Let me show you guys what I'm talking about here. So with the 392, like I said, no two wheel drive option. So it is a four position transfer case and it only has four high auto, four high part-time, neutral, and then four low. I think that's a pretty smart thing that Jeep did because you know people would be definitely doing burnouts with this thing if it came with an option of two-wheel drive only. Now, I know there are ways to actually disable the four high auto and just make it you know only two-wheel drive, but you need to go through the process of getting a taser, and you know, some people just don't want to do that. So starting off with two wheel drive, this is pretty self-explanatory. It should only be used on, you know, normal driving conditions, highway, interstate driving, anytime where you're on a dry road, a hard surface when it's not slippery and you're just doing, you know, normal commute driving. So the next position is four high auto. And this is the first position for the 392. Four high auto engages the front drive shaft and sends power to the front wheels. And it's primarily driven by the rear wheels in this mode. But of course, if the Jeep does sense that the Jeep is actually slipping or needs additional traction, then it will send power to the front wheels accordingly, you know, as much as it needs to or as little as it needs to. So that's why I like four high auto because, you know, the Jeep basically decides what traction level it needs. If it's slipping, it'll send more power to the front. Now the next mode is four high part time. So that's basically when the front and rear tires are spinning at the exact same speed. So they're locked together in the center. And it's basically the next step above four high auto when you know you're going to need additional traction and you know you're going to be on a slippery surface and not a dry or interstate type commute drive. So this is perfect for, you know, off roading. If you're not doing any kind of rock crawling, you definitely want to be in four high part time if you're in slippery surfaces, trail riding, anything like that. One downside with four high part time is that, you know, sometimes if you are on a dry surface and you're accidentally still in four high part time, there is that risk of messing up the drive line. If you're turning on a hard surface and the front and rear are locked together, then that could cause damage. So that's why you definitely don't want to be using four high part time if you're on, you know, asphalt or a dry surface. That's why four high auto is good for that or just plain old two wheel drive. Now, the next step down is just going to be neutral. This can be used for towing and it's also used to switch between your high range and low range in the transfer case. So if you look real quick here, we went over, of course, I don't have two wheel drive, but two wheel drive would be the first one normally. The first one for me here is four high auto. Next one is four high part time and then neutral. Now the next one we're going to talk about is four low. Now four low is going to be used for off road only. Of course, you definitely want to be on slippery surfaces where it's not going to be dry or where you actually have you know, good enough traction to only use two wheel drive. Same as four high part time, four low also locks the front and rears together. So they're spinning at the exact same speed. So same thing applies. You definitely don't wanna be using four low on a dry surface, especially if you're gonna be turning because that can cause some damage potentially. Along with potential damage to the drive line, it can also increase your tire wear as well. It provides additional traction as well as maximum pulling power. And with four low, you shouldn't be exceeding 25 miles per hour. Now when it comes to four low, the engine speed will be about three times faster than it would be in four high or two high. That's what's meant by high range and low range. If you have the Rubicon trim, then it's four times faster as opposed to three times faster for the non Rubicon trim models. So just to make the math easy, if you're driving one mile per hour, your engine speed will be at a thousand RPMs, just as an example. That's in four high. If you switch to four low, 
then if you drive one mile per hour, your engine speed will be at 3000 RPMs or 4000 for the Rubicon trim models. And that's what makes four low so good for rock crawling or any kind of slow speed off-roading because it gives you that added torque feel, also maximum pulling power and maximum traction as well. Now that we got all that out of the way, let's talk about actually shifting into the different four wheel drive modes. So basically if you wanna shift from two high to four high or four auto to four part-time, the transition is gonna be exactly the same. So you wanna be anywhere from zero to 45 miles per hour to actually switch into that different mode. If I'm driving anywhere under 45 miles per hour, if I'm in a four high auto right now, I wanna go into four high part-time, I would just be driving normally and you wanna firmly apply pressure backwards until you see it actually go into four high part-time. Of course, I will demonstrate how to actually do this. I just wanna talk it through first. So once you actually put it into four high part-time, you want to momentarily release your foot off the accelerator. That just makes the transition a little bit smoother. You also don't wanna be actively accelerating while actually making that switch. And you do want to make sure that you are applying constant pressure to that four wheel drive lever, just so it doesn't get stuck anywhere in between. Now, something important to note when actually switching is that you wanna make sure that the front and rear wheels are spinning at the exact same speed. So just as an example, if you're stuck in a mud hole and you're only in two wheel drive and your rear wheels are spinning, but your front wheels are not spinning, you wanna stop first and then switch into four wheel drive. If you continue spinning your rear wheels while the front wheels are just completely stopped, you could potentially damage the transfer case. That's why it's always best to do it just while coasting and not accelerating. Now, sometimes you could experience a delay in the shift and that could be due to uneven tire wear, uneven tire pressure, or even cold temperatures. Now, sometimes in colder temperatures, whenever the transfer case fluid has not been completely warmed up yet, you might have to apply some more force than usual on that four wheel drive lever to actually get it to engage. That's completely normal. Now, when it comes to switching from four high to four low, the process will be just a little bit different. So first you want to shift your actual gear selector here. You want to put it in neutral and then you actually want the Jeep to roll at about one to three miles per hour. Once you're rolling, you want to switch your four wheel drive lever into four low. So if you look at the diagram here, what you're going to do if you're in four high part time, you want to push this lever to the right and then you want to pull it all the way back like that just like before you want to apply constant pressure and it will take some force to actually move it into four low but like i said just make sure you have the gear selector in neutral and then you just want to apply constant force to that four wheel drive lever then pull it right and back into four low so you don't actually want to stop in the neutral position because the the transfer case does have a neutral position here as well but you don't actually need to stop in that neutral position. That's only for towing situations. Now it could be possible to shift into four low from four high with the vehicle completely stopped, but sometimes it might not actually work because the mating teeth actually have to be aligned. So that's why it's better to do it while coasting at a low speed of one to three miles per hour. Now it's more common for this shift to actually take more attempts. You know, when you're shifting from four high auto to just four high part time, that usually only takes one try. But when you're going from four high to four low, that can sometimes take more attempts and that is more common. So now that I've explained all the four wheel drive modes and how to actually engage four wheel drive in your Jeep JL Wrangler, let's go ahead and actually demonstrate how to do that in my Wrangler 392. Let's go ahead and start this thing up. And that sound right there definitely never gets old. So as you can see here, we are in an open grassy field. So I would consider this to be a slippery surface. Right now we are in four high auto, as you can see right there. Now I can switch into four high part time without actually driving, or I could be driving anywhere from zero to 45 miles per hour if I wanna make that switch. So just to demonstrate here, I'm not gonna drive. I'll just go ahead and apply constant pressure to the four wheel drive lever all the way back to four high part time. There we go. Once you do that, you will get an indicator here stating that you are in four high part time. So now I'm gonna go back to four high auto, just like that. And I'm actually just gonna drive a little bit and do the switch while driving. So, let's go, let's see, three miles per hour, pull it back, and there we go. We are now in four high part-time, as you can see right there. So now that we are in four high part-time, we can go ahead and switch into four low. Let's just say that we wanna do some crawling or just we want to go at a much slower speed on an off-road trail, for example. So what we're gonna do here first, we're gonna put the gear selector into neutral, just like that. 
And then, like I said, it is easier to actually shift into four low while coasting at one to three miles per hour. It is possible to do it while at a standstill, but you gotta keep in mind those mating teeth might not be properly aligned. So it might just take a few attempts. Since we are on a relatively flat surface here, I'm gonna try to do it while at a standstill. So we are at zero miles per hour, foot on the brake. Gear selector is in neutral. I'm going to push the four wheel drive lever all the way right and then all the way back. Let's see if it takes a few attempts or if it just lets me do it. All right, so that didn't work. All right, so since the mating teeth were not aligned, I was not able to actually do it while at a standstill. So I drove over here to an area that's kind of more at a decline like this. So we are gonna be able to actually coast at one to three miles per hour. Once we're doing that, I'm gonna go ahead and go through with the shift again and see if that works. All right, so we're coasting right now at one mile per hour. And now we can stop. So as you guys saw right there, I just had to push it all the way right and then all the way back using constant force. And it will take some force to actually get it into four low, like I said. Once that happens, you will see a few warning lights come on. Your traction control will automatically turn off. You will see this button here illuminate, just stating that your traction control is turned off. You'll also get the indicator down here, stating that you are in four low. And now that we are in four low, we can put it back into drive. And now once you start driving, you'll notice that the Jeep wants to just drive forward much easier on its own. That's because you are of course in low range and that's what that gear ratio does. So let's go ahead and take my foot off the brake. And yeah, so I don't know how well you guys can hear that, but the engine speed is actually much higher and we're going very slow compared to four high. So now that we're in four low, we wanna go back into four high part-time. We have the gear selector in neutral, as you can see. We're gonna coast. Push the four wheel drive up. As you saw, we push it up and then to the left a little bit. Now we are in four high part-time. Traction control is back on. And you can see right there, we have the indicator light on for four high part-time. So now we can put it back into drive. And if we want to, if we're all done off-roading, we can push it back up into four high auto. And I'm just gonna do this going zero miles per hour. See how that goes. All right, simple as that. Four high auto is right there. And now we are good to go. Right, so as you guys saw there, the transition from two wheel drive, four high auto into four high part-time and four low was pretty simple. But of course, keep in mind that sometimes it may take a few attempts going from high range to low range or low range back into high range. If that happens, just make sure you're coasting at one to three miles per hour. Like I said, you can be coasting forward or backwards for that to happen. And just make sure those mating teeth are aligned. And that way you'll be able to shift into four low smoothly. Other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and explanation of the Jeep four wheel drive system. If you guys have anything else to add, make sure to drop it down in the comment section below. And if you guys are interested in an explanation and tutorial on how to use different previous and older generation transfer cases, such as the NP231 or NP242 on the old Jeep Cherokees, definitely check out my channel. I will link my video tutorial on those transfer cases down in the description of this video. So make sure to check those out if you're interested. Make sure to subscribe for some more 392 and Jeep Cherokee XJ videos. And thanks for watching.